So, yeah, classy canines. Uh, let's go there. This is the summary of how I started. I started in 2006 after I finished my Ivy diploma. I came across somebody who wanted to train and hand over her business. So I took the chance. It seemed like a good opportunity for pocket money. And I'm still doing it because I fell in love with it. I <coughs> turned it into a limited company in 2009 and opened our first blooming parlor this year in May. Now, dog grooming, well, professional dog grooming is generally reserved for dogs now from medium hair maintenance, like a Japanese spit, to high hair maintenance, like a Shih Tzu or a Poodle. Um, home grooming is something that can be done by egg, by yourselves, like when you're at home. Men, how many of you have dogs? Okay. Pressing <laughs> <laughs> right. um, things in a better way. A minimum grooming. A minimum professional group includes a wash, condition, blow dry, hair, nail clipping, and filing. The filing is for your comfort, not the dog's comfort, because freshly cut nails can sometimes scratch you and hurt you. Um, this is a bit of a before and after. She's a Shih Tzu, and she's very regularly groomed, so she has a full body of hair, and it's much easier to dull her up. She doesn't get knots or anything because she's well, her hair is well taken care of. Her hair from her eyes has to be taken away from her face, and her feet need to be tidied up as well. So after she looks like that. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A dog who looks pretty and clean is much more likely to attract being petted and being smiled at and having good things said to them. So you're going to have a better relationship with your dog if you take care of their hygiene and their comfort. Yeah. Also, when my hair is in a mess or if I haven't been able to have a shower, I'm not in the best of moods. Mm -hmm. So if you take care of your dog's grooming, you're, you end up having a dog who has a better temperament in general and is generally happier. Now, this is a, a rare case, I suppose, because we don't... That's a very high maintenance hair do, so to speak. Oftentimes I do hairstyles which are intended to make home grooming much easier. So I don't need to come as often into the house as I would if you know the dog needs a wash and go dry every week. Um, this is a pick and knees, and this is the only shot in my slideshow that isn't from that I didn't take myself of my own uh, grooming dogs. Not well, my my clients dogs, but understand what I mean. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, because the Pekingeses that I do groom generally have their hair cut. So this is what they look like when they're not having their hair cut. She, she's just well brushed, yeah? Uh, Classy Canines, my company, specializes in being able to combine traditional show cuts, which are very specific about how long the hair under the ears has to be and under the tummy, and they have very many rules as to what is permissible or not in the show ring with what is convenient for the owner. So this is our before for our Bikinis, and there's the after. So she keeps her tail and her ears long, because it's pretty, and it's also, those are the easiest parts to comb, to comb through when I'm not around. So this is a look that is very convenient for the owner, and she, she's cute, yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The rest of what I've got are just other shots of, of films that I do and have done. <laughs> <laughs>